Hey loves, today we are testing out the brand new one size turn up the base full B liquid foundation. I picked up two shades, so we're gonna swatch both, do a first impressions and of course full day wear test. And we're doing a two day wear test, you already know. So grab a snack, get cozy and let's get into it. Let's start with swatches first. I'm not gonna do any primer. I just wanna see how the foundation wears over top of my skincare. What you guys see here on my skin is just leftover SPF from the morning. And this is the Notorium Dew Glow Moisturizer SPF 50, which I love under makeup. And this is what the foundation looks like. I love the packaging. We have a gorgeous frosted glass with a red top beautiful and this retails for $44 and it comes in 38 different shades little bit about the foundation it says it only has 16 ingredients it's long wearing waterproof sweat proof and it gives you full coverage and maximum comfort to visibly blur and smooth without clogging pores I also picked up the turn up the base infinity beauty sponge this retails for $19 I did get it damp with some water and I wrung the water out and it is huge but it feels really soft and bouncy very unique shape it literally is like an infinity sign so love that let's see how this applies with the foundation I'm gonna do one side with the sponge and then the other side with the brush so we can compare so I got two shades the first shade is what they color matched me to at Sephora light 50 NR which is interesting because it says neutral rosy undertones but I mean in stores it looked good but hopefully now it still looks good because you know the lighting is always different but then I also decided to grab the shade of medium 10 N which has more neutral undertones just in case this one didn't work so let's get into it of course we have a pump which I love and I'm gonna swatch both colors let's start with the light 50 and our first I'm gonna give it a little shake just in case let's do it first pump there we go so this one again is a light 50 nr looks pretty light but i think maybe when we blend that should work i kind of want to do one side with one shade and then the other side with the other so we can kind of see maybe let's just do that it doesn't have any fragrance which i love I like to apply the product and kind of rub it in with my finger first and then go in and blend. So let's blend that out. Again, I'm going to use the sponge. Oh wow, this fits really nicely. Just blended beautifully. It actually does feel really lightweight for how much coverage this has. The formula is not as thick as I thought it was going to be. sponge actually feels really good let's zoom in a little bit more the sponge does feel really good but it's definitely preference because it's huge I know not everybody likes a really big sponge but you can blend out your foundation though really quickly with it because of the size which is nice I think actually that is a pretty good shade it is kind of light but I think it works I feel like it matches my face really nicely my body it might be a little bit too light for the rest of my body but my face is always a little bit lighter than the rest of my body that I feel like is just the case I did about a pump and a half and that covered up the entire side of my face I think it actually does look really pretty I want to apply it with a brush though I think I'm gonna just like the brush more but you could also use this for other creams and liquids I like the shape of it I actually do think it feels nice it hugs your face really nicely I think it gave good coverage too so that is about a pump and a half and then no foundation I'm gonna see if it has any dry down to it because the finish actually I didn't even see what is the finish of this foundation oh soft matte okay I feel like a lot of the one size products because the BB cream also it runs a little bit more on the yellow side so just something to keep in mind because even that other color it said it was more rosy but it also has a bit of like a yellow tone I'm gonna use an it cosmetics foundation brush oh yeah I think I do like this color a little bit better does feel actually really comfortable 
It's not super thick and it's also not very runny. I think it has a really nice consistency. The finish is soft matte, but that's also going to depend on your skin prep. I always recommend doing a moisturizer, even if you have oily skin, just so that the makeup lays really nicely and it doesn't look dry. Because even if you have oily skin, you want to just do a light layer of maybe like a gel moisturizer or something. Looks really smooth. Definitely gives beautiful coverage. It's clinging a little bit on this side right here to some dry patchiness that I didn't even know that I had, to be honest. Oh, I need to shave my face too. But again, it's soft matte, so that might be inevitable if you have more dry skin. That's why I said skin prep is key with this. But the formula feels nice. Not too thick, which I appreciate. So definitely did a nice job at just evening everything out. So let's let this sit for a little bit and then I'll be right back and we'll see if there's any dry down to it. So it's been a good 15 minutes and this is what the foundation looks like. So there is not a full dry down with it. So setting is key. It does have that soft matte finish, but of course it's going to vary on your skin prep. There is still going to be a little bit of that glowiness kind of coming through from whatever products you're using underneath which i don't mind because like i said i always set anyways doesn't feel totally tacky but i still think setting is key also now that i'm looking at both sides i don't feel like there's a huge difference between the brush side and the sponge side but i do prefer the brush side i don't know it may be also it's just me but i feel like the brush side looks a little bit more soft matte versus the sponge side it has a little bit more glowiness peeking through not much though it's totally a personal preference but i just like a brush more so let's finish up the rest of the makeup i'm going to start off with some cream blush this is the milani cheek kiss cream blush in blushing berry these are so pigmented concealer of the day is going to be the house labs triclone skin tech in shade 24 now let's set everything i'm going to use one of my all-time favorites the wet n wild translucent powder the powder is always so satisfying that's what gives you that gorgeous finish it just makes you look so blurred wow that does look super smooth i mean there's like no pores here at all like they're gone. And then for the rest of the face, I'm gonna set with my Charlotte Tilbury Press Powder in One Fair. For bronzer, this is the Juvia's Place Bronzer Duo in Medium. I had this out to use and I totally forgot. I meant to use the cream blush in this too. This is the Cheek Clapper Blush Trio. And I am gonna actually just add some blush and a little bit of the glowy blush for some extra glow on the cheeks. Really pretty. The foundation is definitely very pigmented, but I love the coverage. I think everything applies really nicely over top of it. Skin prep is definitely key. I can see this maybe clinging on to some dry spots if you don't moisturize properly beforehand. The rest of the makeup is complete. All products that I used, I will have for you guys in the description box. For the lip combo, this is so perfect for fall. Rare Beauty Gifted Lip Pencil with the new Fenty Gloss Balm Stick in Riri. Now that everything has fully settled into the skin with the powder and everything, you can see that true soft matte finish so hydrating beforehand is key because i feel like this is one of those foundations where it doesn't feel drying it is a matte formula so it can i feel like cling to dry spots if you don't moisturize properly but everything applied really beautifully over top i really like how pigmented the foundation is but the fact that it's not thick is a plus in my book it doesn't look cakey too it actually looks very pretty and really smooth and i didn't even use a pore filling primer the powder definitely helps with that as well but i'm loving it i also feel like with the sponge side and the brush side they both look pretty much the same i will say the sponge side does look very smooth and flawless this is a nice sponge if you want to splurge on it i do think it's nice i love the shape of it very unique you could blend out your creams and liquids very quickly with this just because of the size and it does feel really soft. I like that it didn't absorb an excess amount of product as well. So I do like the sponge. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but I think if you splurge, you won't be disappointed because it is really nice. So I think this is also one of my favorite shapes that I've tried for sponges 
so I do like it. I think I'll continue using the sponge and the brush. I think they both look very nice. I don't think that either one looks majorly different. Also, I feel like both shades look pretty good as well. I don't notice a big difference between the two. I think I'll continue experimenting with both. The undertones are a little bit like iffy. I don't know. I can't say that both of these are my absolute perfect match, but I will say I do like them. I'm noticing a little bit of around my nose, like it's kind of seeping into that area and just looking a bit dry. So that's why I said moisturizing with this is key, especially if you have dry skin. I feel like you need some good skin prep because it is more soft matte, but I can see maybe you loving this more if you have oily or combo skin, but we're going to see how it wears throughout the day. I'm not going to use any setting spray because I just want to see how it looks on its own. I first started applying everything around 11. It is just over 12 PM. So I'm going to come back in a few hours and we shall see how it looks. But right now I will Will say I do like it. I was nervous about the shades, but I think they both ended up working out really nicely as well. So I'll see you in a few hours. So this is a total of about almost nine hours of wearing the foundation because I started applying it around 11 and this is what everything looks like. This is again with no touch-ups, no primer, no setting spray. I have to say, I think the wearing power on this is actually really good. I was sweating this day and tapping my skin with a napkin. I did notice the foundation fading around the nose and above my lip the most. But other than that, besides all the shine and oil coming through, the foundation is still in place. It definitely, like I said, has really good lasting power. I also did notice that the foundation does cling to certain dry areas and it can look dry overall in certain parts of the face. So if you have more dry skin, normal skin, I don't know how much you would love this. I think this is geared more towards oily skin. I think the lasting power is good on its own, but a primer and setting spray is necessary to make it look even better. Welcome to day two of trying out the foundation again. This time I am going to use primer and setting spray because I do think it's going to help with just the way that the foundation wears throughout the day. Although I thought yesterday the longevity of it was great. I just got pretty oily by the end of it. So hopefully we can tame that a little bit better today. So as usual, skin prep is just my skincare from this morning. And at this point, it's already the afternoon. So I'm going to prime with the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. I'm going to do a generous amount of this today. I feel like I need it with the foundation. I want to be super matte. At least in my T-zone. That's where I get the most oily. I'm going to just actually put this all over my forehead though. This is a really good primer. I let that sit into my skin for about a minute or so, which I always recommend before moving into the next step. Let your products absorb. So I'm going to try out both shades again because yesterday I didn't really notice a huge difference between the two, but I think the medium shade is going to be better. But let's start off again with the Light 50 NR. I'm going to apply this on this side first. And I think I'm just going to use the sponge today because surprisingly, when I was looking back at the footage and at my makeup yesterday, I actually thought that the sponge side looked a little bit smoother, but we're going to try it again. So... I like to apply the product on the back of my hand first and then from here work this into the skin. And now we blend. I feel like around the nose it gets a little kind of dryish. It clings to that area a little bit. Okay, so that is Light 50 NR. So the foundation with this sponge lays really nicely on the skin. I feel like it's very smooth. It doesn't absorb a lot of product. I mean, it is a sponge, so, you know, that's kind of inevitable, but I feel like you still get that maximum coverage with the sponge application. And that looks really, really pretty. So again, that is Light 50 NR. I wasn't. I thought I liked the brush side more, but I think I do like the way this applies the product. I feel like this flat side of the sponge just really fits nicely onto the skin. Okay, now let's go in with medium 10N on the other side. And I'm going to use the clean side of the sponge. I do like how quick the sponge blends everything out because of the size and shape. I have some of my brow product here 
that it's on my forehead. I don't want that to interfere with anything. Let's add a little bit more to the forehead actually. So those are both shades, medium 10N and light 50NR. I love the way the foundation looks. I think I like it actually more today than yesterday. This sponge, I think I changed my mind about it. It actually is really good. Although I'm sure you could probably get the same effect with your favorite sponge. I don't think that you need the sponge to get the foundation to look flawless. Like the formula of the foundation is also really nice. But the sponge is a nice addition if you want to splurge. I think this is nice. I love the shape of it. You could really maneuver it to fit into a lot of different parts of your face to blend everything really nicely. And the flat side of the sponge is my favorite because it blends out with your foundation so quickly and gives you that really pretty smooth finish. So the dry down on this foundation is soft matte, but it's not fully matte. Like it doesn't have a powdery finish. So as I said yesterday, even if you do let it sit for a little bit, I do still recommend setting this with a powder because you're still going to have a little bit of that tacky finish with the foundation. So let's move into the rest of the makeup. For blush, I'm going to do Road Toasted Teddy today. This is one of my favorites. Same concealer as yesterday, the House Labs one, because I literally cannot stop using this. I also love the shade 24. Apparently you can use the sponge for the under eyes as well. Let me try it. Because you can kind of just like pinch it to fit under here. Now I love brush brushes for my under eye concealer, but it actually looks really good. Okay, I think I do love this sponge. Today for powder, I'm going to go in with the one size because I feel like I need a little bit extra, you know what I mean? Like a little more mattifying today. This one is the Ultimate Setting Powder in Translucent. This is a very mattifying powder. So definitely make sure you hydrate before using this. But it looks really pretty, very smooth. I love a good translucent powder. I have a pink one too, which I think is also really pretty. So I am setting pretty much my entire face with this powder today because it is very matte and I feel like I need it with this foundation. I want to see if that's going to make a difference with how it wears. I'm not going to touch up or anything today just like I did yesterday, but I'm going to just pack on the powder a little bit more. I'm also going to set everything with the one size setting spray as well because that is my favorite hairspray for the face basically the rest of the makeup is complete for the lip combo this is actually a drugstore combo hard candy insta pout lip liner in boyfriend with the hard candy lip oil in sugar spin so i actually really love the way the foundation looks today i think a little bit more than yesterday i think it looks smoother and i don't know something about it today i'm just into it so i'm gonna set everything down with the one size until dawn waterproof setting spray I don't really have any complaints. I think hopefully it's going to wear a lot better today. The primer, the extra powder, and setting spray always makes a difference. But I like testing out the foundation by itself so that we can see what products would work best, what the foundation needs to perform the best. But I think on its own it's good. But hopefully with the extra steps and products, it'll be even better today. So I'm going to come back in a few hours and we'll see how everything looks. So it is just after 10.30 and this is what everything looks like. Once again, I have not touched up. I do think the primer, setting spray, and powder combo did make a difference. I am shiny. There is some oils peeking through, but I feel like it's not as much as it was yesterday. Maybe it is. I don't know, but I, I definitely feel like it helped, though, at least. And by the way, I did use a tissue, so the foundation did fade around my nose and above my lip a little bit. But other than that, I think everything else still looks really good. The foundation is very long-wearing. I will say the formula on its own, even if you're not using a primer, it's going to stay on your face. So I do think it lives up to all of the claims touching up throughout the day will be necessary i think especially if you have oily skin or if you have combo skin like myself however this formula is matte there is no dry down to it but it's a soft matte foundation so i don't think you're gonna like this if you have dry skin because i am noticing around my nose it looks a little bit cakey and i feel like it's one of those products that 
throughout the day it could look a little bit dry in certain areas because of that soft matte finish so skin prep is key but again I think if you have dry skin you might like something that's a little bit more hydrating or less matte than this foundation I appreciate the coverage though and I appreciate how long wearing the formula is like I said even with no primer you're gonna get some longevity with this which I think is great especially because it is pricey so it's gonna last for me the undertones of the foundation I'm not crazy about the two that I got I feel like it's still not a perfect match I think this is a really nice formula for me personally Personally, it's not going to be my new go-to everyday foundation because it is a very pigmented, more heavy kind of product that I think would work for full coverage glam or a special occasion because it is very beautiful. It's super pigmented. So I think this would be best and ideal if you have oily skin. For me personally, I prefer something with a little bit more of a natural satin finish. I really love the new Huda Beauty foundation. I think a little bit more than this one just because of the finish. But that is going to come down to personal preference and your skin type. However, I still think this foundation is gorgeous. Like I said, you would really enjoy this if you have oily skin. The lasting power is great. The undertones are a little eh. But other than that, I still enjoyed the foundation. I do also really like the way this looks with the sponge. Surprisingly, this infinity sponge is fabulous. I wasn't really too crazy about it, I feel like, yesterday. But today, using it again, I'm like, wait, this actually is perfection with the foundation. I really like the way that it looks. It makes everything look super smooth. I love the shape. It's super soft. So this is a winner for me. I think this might be for me a special occasion or full coverage kind of moment. Not for every day because it is a little bit more on the heavy side. For me day to day, I love something maybe a little bit more natural, just something that isn't as matte because then throughout the day I want my skin to, I mean, I, you still see some shine coming through, but I don't really love the little dry spots that are kind of clinging onto the foundation. So if you want to try it out, get a sample if you don't want to commit to the full bottle because it's pricey. So see if it's going to work with your skin, with your skin prep, your other products, but... For me, I would say, I don't know, I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half out of 10. I think it's beautiful, but I just have other preferences with foundations. So I'm curious to know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I hope this was helpful. If there's any other foundations you guys want me to test out, let me know. Make sure to subscribe for new videos every week and let me know what your thoughts are on this foundation. Are you gonna pick it up? What do you think? Which side also do you like better, light or medium? Let me know. I love you guys. Thanks for being here and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.